Hello, everybody. It is Jonathan Keller from California Family Council. Happy to be with you this 4th of July week. Hope you all had a wonderful Independence Day celebrating the many good things about our country. It's not a perfect country, but God has been so gracious to us and given us so many freedoms. It's really a blessing to be able to live here and to continue to fight for life, family, and liberty, both in the United States of America and specifically here in the Golden State of California. On that note, speaking of fighting for freedom, I wanted to bring our good friend and my coworker, Greg Burt, onto our video today. Greg, thanks for joining us from outside the Capitol today in Sacramento. Hey, thanks, thanks to, for being here. It's a beautiful day. Uh, but uh, inside the Capitol, we just had a hearing for a particular bill that we have been very concerned about attacking parental rights. It's AB 1184. It's sponsored by Planned Parenthood and Equality California. And more or less, it's going to demand that insurance companies keep secret from parents the uh, treatments, specific treatments that their children are receiving. And so these treatments, uh, they call sensitive services, they include abortions, they include mental health care. They include uh, any type of uh, transitioning drugs, such as cross-sex hormones and uh, puberty blockers. Um, and I always mentioned abortion, but also sexual assault uh, treatment. All these uh, types of treatment, the legislature believes parents don't have a right to know that their kids are receiving. That is already the law, but now they're going to make sure insurance companies don't inadvertently reveal the type of treatments and who's giving these treatments on the medical statements you receive at home. So very concerning uh, a bill. It did pass um, uh, uh, the uh, legislature. Uh, it already passed the assembly, so it was in the Senate Health Committee today. So, Greg, yeah. this has been, obviously, it's been already through the assembly. It was in the Senate today. I know you were inside that building, and there were, unfortunately, very few Republicans that were actually in the room present for the vote. Um, the reason I say that, many of you know, if you're watching, you know California Family Council is a nonpartisan, nonsectarian organization. We don't endorse any one particular party or any specific candidate. But unfortunately, Greg, it, it really was a, an issue of one party, in this case, the majority party, the supermajority party of the Democrats. They were just relentless in pushing this bill. And there was really only one senator that spoke out in opposition. Um, so uh, many that was right. You, that was right. So tell us about that. Who was the senator, brave senator who spoke out and just raised some of the, the real serious concerns with this type of legislation? Sure. There was uh, Senator Melissa Melendez. Uh, she was on the floor and she asked some great questions on behalf of parents. You know, she said she told them, you know, teenagers, uh, you know, they're obviously not all teenagers love to tell their parents uh, what they're up to. But teenagers need parents. And she said, you know, she was just saying, why would we want to pass a bill that keeps the medical services, especially medical services that can do permanent damage to a child. Why would you want to keep parents from knowing uh, the type of medical services their children are receiving? You know, specifically, she mentioned mental health. If your child is having mental health issues at the age of 12 or 13, wouldn't you want to know and be there to walk them through the, the, the difficulties? What if they get on a drug that is, you know, uh, wrongly prescribed? What if uh, the medical health uh, provider isn't providing good health care? Parents need to be involved and is, you know, and also, you know, Planned Parenthood is involved in this because they don't want parents to find out their children are receiving services from their clinics. And, you know, whether it's abortion services or, you know, um, uh, the, the, the new thing that Planned Parenthood is doing is they're uh, giving out cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers, both of which, when, when given out in combination, sterilize a, a child permanently. Right. So think of your 13 year old who's been convinced, you know, that they aren't a boy or a girl and they want to take they've been convinced the, the solution to their problem is, you know, they're trapped in the wrong body and they want to start taking these uh, cross sex hormones. This will destroy the reproductive system. Shouldn't parents be involved to say, hey, slow down. Let's let's, you know, from a Christian perspective, you know, this is a, a, a terrible thing to offer a child 
to solve their their difficulties and anxieties. I, I couldn't agree anymore. And it's really amazing to me, Greg. I know Senator Connie Leva, who unfortunately has been an opponent of a lot of the legislation and a lot of the work that CFC has done over the years. She was the author of the bill, both sets of bills that tried to mandate and eventually did end up mandating that every single uh, UC and CSU college campus, all of their health centers have to stock um, and, and carry and provide free of charge abortion causing chemical uh, drugs. Um, she was I mean, I wish I could say surprisingly, but very predictably, she was heavily in favor of this bill. And uh, she even, Greg, I think somewhat rudely and proudly said that, well, you know, if every parent were as enlightened as me, then maybe this bill wouldn't be necessary. But there are some parents out there who won't accept their kids' sexuality or gender identity. And that's why we need this bill, is to protect kids from their bad parents who don't really love them as much as I love my daughter. That's what she said, I mean, in, in so many words on the floor of the Senate today. Um, you know, she was, her, she has a uh, child of her own that uh, uh, identifies as a lesbian and that, you know, her child was loved and accepted, but there's plenty of other parents out there who won't be loving and accepting. And that's why we have to keep these secrets from parents. If a child wants to transition to the other sex, you know, parents shouldn't be able to stop it or have any input, right? Um, actually, it came down to uh, legislators are more afraid of bad parents than they are of bad medical providers. They assume all medical professionals never do wrong, never misdiagnose, you know, and never uh, mischarge somebody for the services you receive. But parents, those are the dangerous ones, right? We have to stop parents from intervening uh, to being involved uh, with, their, with their teenagers. Uh, health uh, health services, you know, it's parents, we, we can't put up with this. I mean, I think uh, one of the things they complained is that, you know, well, this is already the law, right? The, the law already says that all these services uh, can be received. And, and we acknowledge that. But I don't think most parents realize that, that your 12 year old can consent to their own mental health care, abortions at any age, sexual assault care, drug treatment, they can consent to that. And, and, you know, does anybody ha have teenagers out there, <laughs> right? I mean, they don't have the where they think they have the wherewithal to make the decisions, but they need their parents input, right? There are kids. They're not the government's kids. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that, Greg. And I think the incredibly frustrating thing and, and folks, you, you all know this, if you've seen uh, everything that goes on inside this building, uh, more and more, the legislators in that Capitol building really, truly do think that they are a better parent. They think they are, you are, they are a better father, a better mother. They can better provide for and take care of your children than you can. And I understand that there are very fringe edge cases where there might be an, an extreme circumstance. One thing that Senator Richard Pan mentioned on the call was that, um, you know, look, there could be an, a situation where uh, there is abuse, there's domestic violence, and a child needs to be able to confidentially discuss something with a health care provider. I, I understand that. I don't think anybody, even conservative parents, are opposed to health care providers being domestic violence uh, reporters or being child abuse reporters. I, I understand that. What we are completely opposed to and deeply concerned about is the growing trends of places like Planned Parenthood trying to not um, protect children, but really subvert parental authority and go far above and beyond the bounds of what has traditionally been understood as that doctor-patient -pa uh, relationship. And, and Greg, this is something that was so amazing for me to see over and over. We heard Senator Richard Pan, who is himself a pediatrician. He said, look, I've got, you know, a teenager and a preteen and, you know, a younger child as well. I'm a pediatrician, but he, he kept referring to these children as the patient. And I understand that, yes, technically, if they are in your office, they are a patient of yours. But the whole idea that you would begin treating these children as patients um, and completely excluding their parents from any sort of oversight or direction. I, I mean, it's, it's very chilling. Um, 
the the idea that they have all these rights and all of these abilities to make these life altering decisions um, on their own, just in consultation with maybe whoever their doctor is, and that parents would be completely cut out from the decision making process. Uh, that's deeply concerning. No, it's it's also concerning in light of you know law now requiring when a child comes to someone and says they think they're transgender, the only thing a licensed professional can say is to affirm their own diagnosis. So in California, children diagnose their own gender dysphoria, and as soon as they indicate they are the opposite sex, the only thing medical providers can say is, you're right. And, you know, in, in light of that, um, you know, parents need to be involved, right? Uh, we've talked about this before, but there's a book out there by Abigail Schreier called, um, oh, the name just popped out of my head. Uh, Irreversible Jonathan. Damage. Irreversible Damage. Just talking about rapid uh, onset gender dysphoria. This is uh, gender confusion that happens all of a sudden when kids hit their teenage years. And a lot of kids are being influenced, especially kids on the autistic spectrum, uh, to consider and think that the the reason they're having social issues or, or problems in society in their in their social life is because well they're really the opposite sex and they get fixated on this and then they self-diagnose and you know all the medical professionals just push them towards one direction there's no more waiting and watching allowed um, which is what they used to do because 80 to 90 percent of kids who struggle with gender dysphoria when they're a children grow out of it by the time they're adults right not anymore um, so that was my thoughts on that. So now the well, bill, I, I do, I do think it's to... deeply disturbing. Yeah. Sorry, Greg, I was making sure that I, uh, I, I unmuted myself. I didn't want to have some echo back there, but yeah. So oh, tell us now we know, we know what's happened so far. Tell us the next step and what, what is going to be the, uh, the outcome as we move forward. Yeah, the bill is not dead. I mean, it's still alive. The bill is still going through the process. It's going to go to the Senate Judiciary Committee next, then it'll go to the Senate floor. So parents, if you are against this bill, you got to speak up now. Um, speak out against it. The insurance company should not be hiding things from parents, right? I mean, how many times do you call on your insurance company to you know, check on what you've been charged? because you think they, the insurance company is doing it wrong, you've been charged for a service that you didn't, you didn't uh, that should have been covered, right? Uh, that's gonna be impossible when, it deal, when you're dealing with your own kids. We can't put up with this. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's, it's a reminder, folks, I, I hate to say it, but California is becoming just so incredibly hostile, uh, not only to taxpayers. I think, Greg, a lot of times our friends uh, in the media or our friends in the Republican Party or the conservative establishment, a lot of times they only really focus on those policies that are dealing with economic concerns. They talk about, oh, isn't it so horrible that, uh, you know, taxes are going up and, you know, California has the highest gas prices in the nation and, uh, you know, housing unaffordability, you know, it's so difficult to buy a house these days in California. And, congestion on the roadways is bad and yada, yada, yada. They talk about all those things. Maybe they'll talk about, as we've seen in San Francisco, general issues of safety and the fact that, you know, we're allowing uh, criminals out on the streets. We're in many cases not even arresting them if they've only uh, stolen $950 or, uh, of merchandise or less. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen those tragically uh, famous videos over the last few weeks of individuals going into a Walgreens or a CVS, literally just scooping off stacks and stacks of items from a drugstore, loading them into a black plastic trash bag, and then just waltzing out the door on their bike. Security won't stop them, and in many cases, they won't even be arrested. Um, those are all big concerns. But Greg, I, I think part of the huge problem is that even the media uh, will probably not even remark on today's story. They will not mention the fact that California is taking this incredibly drastic step to undermine the rights of parents. And as a result, a lot of parents will probably not even find out about it 
until it is too late. They, they won't find out, as we've heard for years and years, many parents never find out that their child or their daughter is even pregnant until after they've had an abortion and the parent has to take them to an emergency room for complications as a result of that abortion. And now it sounds like many parents will not even find out that their parent has been struggling or that their child has been struggling with gender dysphoria um, until the uh, cross-sex hormones or puberty blockers have really wreaked havoc on their reproductive system. No, you're right. So, folks, we got to speak up. Uh, you know, this stuff thrives in silence, and the only thing that's going to stop it is outraged people calling their legislators, you know, politely but firmly saying, hey, you, this is this this bill does not re represent my desires. And so everybody's got a representative who's up here representing them. And uh, everybody's got to take responsibility to make sure the representative knows exactly how they feel about this bill. Well, thank you, Greg, and everybody who's watching. Again, if you want to find out more, uh, Greg has written some articles about this. We have lots of posts about this and other bills on our website, californiafamily.org. And of course, right here on Facebook as well, we have lots and lots of stories that we have shared, both our original reporting that Greg and uh, others have done, but also those that are shared from our friends at other great reporting organizations like The Federalist, Daily Signal, uh, even mainstream stories, The Wall Street Journal, Fox News, etc. They've started to cover a lot of these issues that have been happening, uh, especially as you mentioned, Greg, our friend Abigail Schreier published a piece a few weeks ago that dealt with some of these issues. Beyond her book, she's continued to follow up on this. So uh, for now, sure. folks, I just encourage you, go to our main website, californiafamily.org. Again, californiafamily.org. And I encourage you also, please, please, please subscribe to our email newsletter. It is there right on the website. You click there. And if the pop-up doesn't ask you to subscribe, you just click the sign up button at the top. And we are happy to uh, sign you up, make sure that we keep you posted about these issues. And one final appeal, if I could, um, make a donation to CFC. The work that Greg and I do, we provide everything obviously for free. This is reporting that we do. And by God's grace, we do not have to do advertisements. <laughs> we don't have to do uh, the types of things that a lot of other news organizations have to do. But the work that we're doing, uh, it does still require us to take care of our families, to uh, feed our kids, and to um, uh, pay those normal bills. So we appreciate your support as we're continuing to provide resources and education to you. So uh, for now, go to that website, californiafamily.org. I'm Jonathan Keller. This is Greg Burt. God bless. And we will talk with all of you later. Appreciate your support and prayers. Okay. Are we off? Hold on one second. Not quite. <laughs> All right. I got to turn off real quick. Just a moment. Sorry, everybody. When we're doing the, uh, the closing thing, sometimes it's a little tricky to figure out how we push. There it is. That's the finish button. <laughs> All right. We'll do it for real this time. God bless everybody. We'll talk to you soon.